The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. And uh, what do we got going on? Oh, we like to come to you at this time every day. The following and takes what place else do we between have? 2 p.m. Anyway, uh, as we start the show off today, uh, 2996 and three quarters is the last tick I see on the S&P cash. Of course, that's uh, off the uh, 3,010 that we hit earlier in the morning on Microsoft earnings. Microsoft's kind of rolled back down to 137, 138. We'll take a look at it in a minute. I was never impressed with the earnings. I was very impressed by the enormous amounts of people telling me how it blew away everything that they ever thought of, uh, except I'd seen all the whisper numbers everybody had been talking about for two weeks, and it didn't come close. Uh, we've got a absolutely one of those kind of thunderstorms going on here in Tampa today. So if I lose you, it's uh, it's not the uh, deep state trying to get rid of me. It is probably just an internet connection issue. So I will give you fair warning before. Uh, other things going on in the markets today. Uh, just a lot of very low volume this morning as we t started off. Uh, just uh, 3.4 billion shares on the uh, NY, or excuse me, on the CBOE consolidated tape. So again, we push higher. There is no volume. Uh, we go lower, and we get a lot of job boning. I do want to talk about what happened yesterday, and that was uh, one of the Fed officials uh, came out with this paper uh, that later oh, by. I think by 7.30, maybe by 8, uh, was being, we were being told by other Fed officials, uh, was just kind of uh, one of these uh, things where you uh, uh, kind of dream up something that happens, some scenario, uh, and we probably really shouldn't have paid attention to the idea that somebody at the Fed said that it would be a half a percent uh, cut. But almost nothing, almost no retraction of that today. I did watch a few minutes uh, this morning, see if anybody actually talked about it. They tried to walk it back, but they did it very quietly. So I'm telling you right now, I don't think that there's more than a 2% chance that we get a half a percent rate cut. Um, I think it's 98% chance we get a, a, a quarter point raise, or a cut, excuse me. And that that is it. Um, not exactly sure why someone would do that. I always wonder whether or not uh, they're just stupid uh, or maybe their brother or sister or wife, somebody that it's not easy to find had puts or calls at a particular time going right into options expiration. Um, always, they always kind of smell a rat in these kind of operations uh, to push these things up and maybe for the most part of the day try to get it as close to 3,000 on the S&P cash because that's where you can destroy lots and lots of money um, you destroy the puts and you destroy the calls and because people like big round numbers they tend to buy things like puts and calls at 3,000 uh, again uh, I wasn't thinking a whole lot I didn't even blink when I saw 3,010 or 3,011 this morning on the S&P cash, I really didn't have any belief that it would stay there. Uh, from the beginning of the morning, we actually uh, went and bought or, or are buying more uh, puts this afternoon on the market. I think uh, a lot of times uh, you look at these things and they scare you a little, uh, but at the same time, to me, it's like a gift because I can add more uh, short positions on stocks that uh, spike for no reason uh, at all, actually. Uh, anyway, we've got a little bit of time going on. Why don't we uh, do a little history, and we'll get in on, on to some of the other stuff going on the rest of the week. So uh, let's do our history. And it's all just a little 
little bit of history repeating. It is a little bit of history repeating. And on this day in 1799 and during Napoleon Bonaparte's Egyptian campaign, the French soldiers discover and recover a black basalt slab inscribed with the ancient writing near the town of Rosetta, about 35 miles north of Alexandria. The irregularly shaped stone contained fragments of passages written in three different scripts, Greek, Egyptian, and hieroglyphics, and Egyptian demonic. The ancient Greek and the Rosetta Stone told archaeologists that it was inscribed by priests honoring the king of Egypt, King Ptolemy V. Um, I thought maybe, I don't, most people don't know what it actually says. Uh, there's a little bit on there of um, uh, telling people that they're great because they're um, uh, supporting the, the current uh, king or, uh, what do you call them? Not a dictator. I guess they wasn't dictators back there. They were just kings, right? But uh, the most important thing that I was on this uh, artifact was tax exemptions. You think that there's something new? You think that I'm kidding when I say that uh, all history just repeats or at least rhymes. This was three-fourths about tax exemptions for various things that the Mr. King wanted to get things uh, going. And uh, that's how we figured out uh, all the hieroglyphs uh, on the walls. In fact, it took about 30 years for them to actually find it. Uh, yeah, the market dropped on Q. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to be surprised to see a lot of destruction here before the end of the day. As we've been saying all week long, 29.75 is where these options have been placed. So if we get some real action here into the end of the day, I think that uh, not only was the uh, Fed speak with a half uh, point uh, rate cut at the end of the month, uh, <clears throat> toilet paper, uh, engineered, and maybe just to help out somebody on Wall Street so one day they get a job there. You never know. Maybe the money wasn't paid yesterday. Maybe it's being paid forward. Uh, but uh, I smelled a rat yesterday when I saw the, uh, the Microsoft uh, earnings uh, and then I heard someone tell me something very different on CNBC. I always start to get a little bit antsy out here when I when people are telling me, uh, as uh, what was it, President Johnson, uh, don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Uh, but it certainly seemed like that. We'll talk more about Microsoft's earnings, uh, but it looked to me like it was nowhere close when I first saw it and it was up a buck, I thought, well, that's okay. Uh, this got nowhere close to the whisper numbers that everybody had been talking about for several weeks. Uh, this thing kind of pushed us up into the end. Not going to be surprised if we get right back down to where we were before it started yesterday, uh, around noon, I guess. We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets, Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. I'm sitting here looking at doing something. Okay. Got the Tech Insider out during the break. Moving on, got a couple other things I'm looking at that I kind of like here. Uh, but uh, first thing we want to talk about uh, is Microsoft's earnings. Or I, I wouldn't say lack of a good company, but a company doesn't matter how strong they're growing, they can be overpriced. I suspect that's exactly what we've got in Microsoft. Um, they were talking up the whisper numbers all the way until last week. That's why I thought that. It would be a disappointment. I thought maybe back down to 128. In fact, I still think that Microsoft is going to come back now to about 128. Uh, again, with the rest of the market and probably through waiting for uh, the, uh, uh, what do I want to say, uh, waiting for the Fed. And of course, that's the end of the month. So we got a little bit of time, but I think we've got a fairly decent week where there's not going to be any kind of catalyst for higher prices and a lot of worry about what the Fed's going to do over the next week. But I think when, when traders start looking this weekend at Microsoft making a new high and then uh, coming back right back in below the three by three or nine day moving average, uh, closing a little weaker, I don't think there's going to be a lot out here uh, for people to think that the market isn't as fully valued as it can get. Now, maybe we get kind of a pullback and after the Fed, we can find some kind of blow. But I think we've got a, a fairly decent seven to 10 days of weaker markets. And probably until the, let's take a look at the calendar here, until we get into fund buying, which is really going to be the maybe Thursday and Friday of the end of the month. Um, I got a sneeze here. Wow, but uh, and nothing like air conditioning to make you sneeze down here in Florida. Uh, anyway, what I'm saying is a lot of these stocks have either missed uh, or disappointing on what everybody thinks is good uh, earnings. But I, when everybody tells me one thing, uh, I always kind of see if maybe they're wrong. And it's, it's something that's I've done my whole life, I think. And that is if someone tells me something, 
the first thing I do uh, is uh, check it out because I don't believe a lot of people. Uh, I would tell the story, uh, but I was learning to fly when I was about 14 or 15 and went to this camp in a little town, a little college town in the middle of the summer for a handful of days, uh, starting to do ground school and learning a little bit about it. So the first thing they do is take us, uh, probably 150 kids, uh, and all these adults, and they all have us do a, a pre-flight on the uh, plane. And I'm, I'm, we're in alphabetical order, and for some reason I think I'm, e I'm either the last or second to the last. So everybody's been around this plane 150 times already. And I'm sitting there, and they take me around to the tail, and they tell me, look down there, is there a clevis pin in there? Uh, with a uh, with a uh, cotter pin and a nut on the end of it, uh, look up there and then let's go, right? And they wanted to go to all the different things. We'll check uh, the fuel in the wings. We'll check that you know all the surfaces are moving free and not binding and all the other things you can check on a Cessna. Well, I looked down there, and after 150 people were told that there was a nut and a cotter pin on the end of the rudder control, uh, I said no. I don't see one. And literally, they were told that there was one there. And everybody just assumed that the people that were instructing us knew that it was there, but it was not there. And uh, if I have a gift, it is that. Whatever anybody tells me, I'm loath to believe it until I've seen it with my own eyes. Maybe that's a little bit of uh, uh, Missouri show me, uh, but uh, you never know. But I was in Missouri at the time, so the other 149 show me's apparently didn't do it. But uh, again, you know, the experience in your life, you kind of drag through all of it. But I always think, uh, hey, what would happen if we actually did it? And the other thing I've always wondered whether or not somebody knew, went in there, pulled it off while everybody was at lunch and wanted to see just how far it would go until someone found it. I never found the answer to that. Uh, but uh, I did find it very uh, interesting that 150 people could look at something, tell everybody it was there, and in reality, it was not there. Uh, anyway, that's, I had that kind of throwback feeling when I was reading uh, the Microsoft uh, earnings. And also, generally, if you think long, you think wrong. And that's from playing poker. Uh, that's an old saying. And that is, if you try to overthink it, it's problematic. And when you see a stock only, and this is where I, I spend a lot of time, anybody in the den knows that I kind of post the uh, earnings as they come through, because I want to see how these stocks react uh, to news, because it gives me a lot of feeling, even though I'm not playing them, I'd say 95% of the time, I don't have an after hours trade on. I am very interested in how they react to the news. Not so much what the news is, but how it reacts to it. Uh, then I see a one-point uh, pop, and then the uh, uh, cacophony of uh, nattering nabobs of CNBC telling me how it seems a lot different than what I read. Uh, and, of course, it could be different once you get to the conference call. But generally, in a market, same thing. You think long, you think wrong. Now, maybe there's some new news coming out, but it never was new news. It was just everybody telling everybody how it had to be the most important thing since sliced cheese. And I guess, especially in tech stocks, if you go back to the late 90s or even through the 2000s, um, analysts are big on always just moving up the high end of the market. So if it does hit, they can say that they were the person that actually call, uh, called it. And they'll go on CNBC and say, yes, I called it. But uh, there's a thing called the Gene Dixon effect, uh, where you uh, call things and you're remembered just because you called them. And there's, you know, these people, you know, you can be minorly right a lot and horribly wrong once, and you'll be on CNBC for the rest of your life. But that's it. Uh, what else is going on? Martians? I don't know what that is. Tell us about the Jedi contract. Uh... I actually wrote about that last week. Uh, the court case was finally settled. 
This is a super high speed, uh, secure fiber optic network for the military. Uh, there's a lot of uh, argument about whether or not uh, the uh, some of the folks, I think it was Amazon that hired uh, one of the inside guys from uh, the military. And so there's a, a lot of, uh, of uh, thought that maybe there is some level of kind of corruption uh, going in for Amazon bidding on the contract to Microsoft. And uh, I think that's a, I don't know enough about it, and there hasn't been enough published other than the fact that uh, even Mr. Prez says that he's going to look into it. So we do not know quite yet. We'll be back in a minute. Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I get Basil chiming in here. Yeah, I, I've got financial journalists often haven't been bitten by the things that they have written. Uh, Basil thinks it should be more rhythmic. Financial journalists never bitten by what they've been, why they've written. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Uh, what else do we have going on? Again, uh, as we said, uh, not much in the way of volume today. Uh, 3.7 billion shares, so fairly light. Uh, and, of course, volume has been significantly lighter 
uh, to the upside, then the downside for the last uh, probably seven to ten trading days. So there's not a lot there. Uh, the longer that you get hang time, uh, generally the more vicious this becomes to the downside. Why? One of the reasons why I've kind of uh, thought about uh, uh, what's going on here. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Take a look here. Okay. And do, 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 do. okay. Um, and we're at uh, 2990. Again, eh, somewhere in the low 2980s, I think we could hit before the end of the day. Maybe someone will go ahead and push this up, but I have a feeling that they just dragged it out to the end of the day and tried to hold it up to kill off as many of those 3,000 uh, puts and calls on the S&P cash, which there are a ton, by the way. Uh, to, to, couldn't even get worse. Or, uh, worse or, it could even get worse if we get a nice run. And we haven't had one for a very long time on options exploration, uh, but we shall see. Uh, subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance should be watching for an update coming out here in a few minutes. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Microsoft's basically at 50 cents now. Let's go back and take a look at uh, NFLX, another one that kind of uh, took a header to the downside. And again, as we said, once these things start breaking at this point, the nine-day moving average or three by three, you're looking for some fairly significant downside and quickly to it. Um, question out here about, uh, to, to, okay, got that, got that, got that. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Okay. Just going through news, see if there's anything breaking now. I don't see anything. Uh, anyway, uh, we were looking at Microsoft. You had huge volume. Um, you've broken through all the previous lows. You've got that big gap at about 280, and I think that's where that eventually is going to head. My guess is it's going to go sideways for a little while now that you've got the uh, big destruction on. Uh, that's it. Uh, QuickBooks has been hit by a ransomware attack crossing the wires. Uh, let's look at some of the other stuff going on as uh, Amazon. I, of course, uh, got some questions on whether or not I'll be with Tom O'Brien today at 3.30. I think I'm finally back. Vacations and other things going on uh, from Tom and I. So we're back together and in the saddle today. We're going to be talking a lot about space and investing in space here in the near future. Uh, a little bit about the hearings this week for uh, Google and Amazon and uh, Facebook, the Facebook, uh, but we'll look. Anyway, uh, you know, you tested uh, the previous high. We were about 15 bucks short on Amazon uh, from that July 11th high to the September 4th high. Uh, it wouldn't be my first pick as a short. Uh, again, I wouldn't be long these things uh, certainly now with any kind of uh, antitrust announcement probably coming out of the ether somewhere. Uh, I'd want to be in stocks that they're probably not talking about that a lot more, but Facebook and uh, Google have a lot more uh, issues right now than I think Amazon, other than the fact that France has enacted a new tax, if you didn't see that, on uh, these big uh, internet uh, sales companies. Probably affect Amazon worse than the rest, but I think they already pay sales tax in Florida already. Uh, let's take a look at the SMHs. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah. Someone talking about the Experimental Aircraft Association starts July 22nd. Always a lot of fun. We have our big fly-in down here called Sun and Fun, and that's what I go to now. No reason to go up there and go through the zoo at the EAA. But uh, enjoyed watching them rebuild a DC-3 uh, that will be there at the EAA next week. Maybe you'll get a chance to see it, John. What else do we have? Uh, semiconductor holdings. Now, this is about as good as the chart gets uh, if you want to pull the uh, trigger on a short position. Uh, you're down and have a gap on the 6th of May uh, with 6.7 million shares. Um, you've got... Uh, a 2.7 million share doji 
right in that gap. Um, so your risk reward really doesn't get any better than right here. And I mean, you're pretty much at maximum resistance. The only thing that could be better would be a retest of this April 24th high. And I don't know if we're going to get that. This volume is incredibly weak as you push higher out there today. I don't see a lot in earnings next week that would drive it farther home. See how uh, NVIDIA and some of these other more volatile stocks are acting. Again, we talked, brought this up, uh, a really weak retest of the July 1st high. That's 173.95 with 18 million shares. Got into that yesterday with 11 million shares. You only have 5.7 million shares, a little rotation on the way back down. Support comes in at about 152 for NVIDIA. Take a quick look at AMD. Uh, yeah, this one's uh, one of the guys from Buffalo Airways. Someone's talking in the den about uh, uh, Basler, which puts uh, turbo props on. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Advanced Micro, we talked about this one. Uh, I didn't like them cutting the margins so extensively. Uh, besides just a weak market already, we talked about how they've gone after both Intel and NVIDIA. Uh, at the same time, and uh, I, to me, uh, kind of like Hitler taking on uh, both the East and West fronts at the same time, I would have liked it better if they just did one or the other, and then maybe in three months after they see how that worked, uh, they would do both, but they didn't. They decided to do attack on all fronts, which I kind of like uh, the aggressiveness, uh, but generally when it's kind of like, uh, and I'm trying to remember the comedian's name, uh, he used to do weekend update. Norm, Norm McDonald. He has a stand up special <laughs> where he talks to a bunch of millennial kids. Uh, and uh, he goes, uh, I don't know if you learned this in uh, history, but uh, the Germans, they, they had this war uh, back around 1914, 1915. And uh, they declared war on the world. And then later, around 1940, they declared war again on the world. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that first day, uh, I don't like multiple fronts being uh, spun up at the same time. Anyway, down a little bit. Not much volume today. Still one of the stronger stocks. We'll look at Micron when we come back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. From email out here about Walgreens, um, you didn't even do very good when you tried to uh, get back into the bottom of this gap from uh, April the 2nd. That had 37 million shares. You only got into it with 7 million shares. So <laughs> ideally, you would like a test of this $49.31 low with like 3 or 4 million shares to say that a low in uh, is in in WBA. I don't see a lot of reasons to uh, to uh, try to die on this hill yet, and certainly, probably through through the at least first or second of the month, I don't see a lot of reasons to be taking a lot of chances to the long side here at all. Uh, to, to, to what do we have? It says that the trying to bounce here. We're at uh, 2987 off seven points on the S&P cash. This is where some at least some minor support should be in. The only thing I have is that you're back down to the previous low of yesterday. I think a lot of people will look at that and start scratching their heads going, well, Microsoft earnings were supposed to be great. Why are people selling? And a little bit of that uh, sell the news. Uh, anyway, I don't see a lot going on in that. Uh, we were going to talk about Micron when we left uh, the last uh, commercial, and we're seeing... Uh, a fairly decent uh, hit right here around 45 bucks, 46 bucks. You got 46 bucks on Micron today. Again, this thing is always massively shorted, uh, so I don't think there's a lot to write in about this. Uh, but we, what we do have is a fairly decent uh, signal out here that there is um, a lot, not a lot of volume. You're at 28 million shares compared to a 40 million share high back on April 3rd. Uh, but uh, if you this one kind of does the same thing that most of the stocks are doing in the next couple of days, this thing closes back below, let's say, $44.25. Got a pretty good signal that a lot of these things have come in. Now, this one had better energy off the June 17th low than any of them. Uh, so I would say that there are other stocks out there that have been weaker uh, in the uh, SMHs that you may want to take a look at. Uh, do, do, do. Eh, I haven't looked at Watt in a while. Uh, this is the company that was supposed to uh, have uh, a uh, magic ability to uh, transfer energy wireless in a room. Uh, I think somebody called in, I think it was Marie, uh, that had heard about this. And I said, this company's either worth $200 a share or it's worth uh, zero. And you don't know because they tell everybody they've got this marvelous tech, but guess what? They won't show it to anybody. Uh, always, uh, always know that at that point, it's almost always a scam. And anybody, you know, the old Carl Sagan uh, adage goes into extraordinary claims need extraordinary proof. And if you're making extraordinary claims, you should be able to show it to people. Uh, there were those guys that were scamming uh, cold fusion forever, and it was, uh, you could always find out that they were heating something on the other side of the wall. They'd never bring it out except at the location of their choosing. Never could be moved, never could be looked at very hard. Uh, of course, they're always saying, well, you might steal it. 
that's fine. But uh, then you don't need to be talking about it until you're ready to sell it. I don't understand why you're talking about it now. Why don't you get a product that you can actually put on the market? Uh, anyway, uh, actually fairly light volume down here. Uh, again, if these guys can ever deliver on a tenth of their promises, $100 stock. Problem is they continue to say that it will be another three months, another six months, another year. And I just, right now, especially the market, looking as weak as it is technically, um, another one that looks like it could go into the ash bin of history. Uh, let's take a look at here. I haven't, we haven't seen that one. That was one that kind of escaped me. Uh, it has come back down. This was really the, uh, they ran the wave of uh, computer game headsets uh, or headphones with boom microphones so all the gamers could play with each other and talk to each other. Uh, but that was uh, very interesting. Uh, I don't see anything down here until about $8.25. Since, and eh, don't even have light volume today, but uh, we'll see what it does. So you want to want to put an alarm? We're gonna go to Robert in Kansas City. How you doing today, Robert? Hi, thank you for taking my call. It's a hot day here. Sounds like your rain there might be a little cooler. Yeah, well, the hottest day I ever was in. I think it was 113, 90 percent or 100 percent humidity there in Johnson County. But uh, you never know. So uh, what yeah. can we talk about today, USO? Yeah, so I currently have a short position. I um, currently have a position in DW, DWT. I'm shorting USO. Mm -hmm. And my thoughts was it was going to go down to the June um, low. And I wanted to see if you share those sentiments, if you think what we're just experiencing now is kind of like a, you know, we might be experiencing a bounce. Or what are your thoughts? Well, the only reason that crude isn't 35 bucks is that the Iranians and the Russians want to keep the Mideast turned out, uh, always uh, spooled up. Um, we've got a million more barrels a day being produced than we're consuming, and it's now getting kind of hard to find places to put it. Uh, but uh, they can, you know, they, we can shoot down a drone, we can do bunch of other stuff, and it just continues to uh, spin it up. I don't think the Iranians have the ability other than to cause uh, world tumult uh, at the moment. Uh, that will, of course, change if they get nuclear weapons, but there's no evidence they've got them yet. Um, but, you know, the, the, I guess the only reason we have any of this uh, support at all is the thought that, it, that we could lose supply. But in the United States, uh, it, you know, this is a, in the USO, much more problematic to say that there's going to be some kind of supply drought. Uh, you know, the, uh, the only thing I dislike about right now is that we do have, or at least when we, uh, for the uh, show, just came out with the Baker Hughes rig numbers. And the rigs were down about four. I would like to see uh, U.S. rig count back up about 1,000. Uh, but as it came down, a lot of people took uh, capacity off. But my guess is that this will eventually come back. Uh, but the, uh, they've kind of figured out which rigs are the cheapest to run, and those are basically kind of the uh, base of the market. Uh, they're taking off a few, I think, to drive prices higher. Uh, but uh, if uh, it was truly a supply and demand game, um, 35 bucks, maybe 40 bucks for crude, but every time it kind of gets down there, uh, the Ruskies or the Iranians, somebody has got to stir the pot to keep the price high. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't be long it, but uh, I certainly can see what you see in it, and that is overall long-term weakness. Um, the one thing I really hate about commodities like oil is it's all headline risk, right? You get one more shot. If you want to hang on through the break, we'll come back in a minute. I'm
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Do we still have Robert on the line? You still there? Yes. Okay. Um, so I don't know where you're short on uh, on this, but um, you came back into a gap up that was on the uh, 20th that had 47 million shares, and you hit it with uh, 38 million shares. So the easy part of this trade is over. Um, you're probably going to at least go sideways or a little bit down. And the question is whether or not um, with gold at fairly steep, especially the miners at fairly steep prices, if they're not going to look at uh, crude as the place to hide out on the weekends. So uh, I would probably hold this to the open on Monday and see whether or not it gaps down and people were just buying it as a uh, hedge over the weekend, because that's not uncommon for both gold and, and crude. So generally, if, it's, if you're still on the right side of the trade, uh, by Friday's close, I would normally wait till Monday's open. So I don't think there's anything to say that it's done going down, but it may go sideways for a while. I don't know. Are you are you pretty much in the chips? No, I'm I'm kind of even about it yesterday. Yeah, I don't think if you're even, I think I would probably uh, pass and wait uh, for Monday or maybe Tuesday to see whether or not you get any continuation but I mean you tested 
yesterday's gap on half the volume, at best, you're going to go sideways for a while generally, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe 80% of the time. Now, maybe something else comes out because oil is all headline driven, at least in the short term. Um, long term, I think it's headed down. I just don't like getting short at what should be support. Anyway, thanks for the call, Robert. Uh, we'll be back with Tom O'Brien at 3.30. We'll be doing our Tech Insider time. And uh, in the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Thank you.